Good morning, Bill. Hi, Jake. Hi, Frank. Sean, I see. Good to see you. Sorry about all that. Mess up with your address. <laughs> no, we're good now. Thanks. Good morning. <laughs> we need you here. Come on. <laughs> Vanessa, Cindy, good morning. Andrea, here you No, she's not here yet. Um, I may have to check out for a few minutes. I have We have somebody coming over around now to um, put a couple of storm doors in. So <clears throat> I may have to um, check out. I wanted to see if Andrea was here so she could chair the meeting. Um, if she doesn't attend, Sean, would you mind taking over as temporary chair while I attend to other business? I'll see what I can remember about having such a role. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, Ellen, Ellen is on vacation, but right. she did, she did say that Andrea was expected to be here. So <clears throat> Lisa, hi Lisa. Lisa, I'm glad you were able to make it. Happy to be here, thank you. So it is just nine o'clock. We have a lot of things to go over here. Mm -hmm. I'll wait another minute and then we can get started if, it's, if that's all right. Mike. Hi, everybody. Hey, Mike. How are you? Great. Brian. Okay. Why don't we get started? Um, Will is here. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> now we can really start. That's right. <laughs> We're going to zip right through this agenda, Will. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. two pages long. <laughs> That's because I couldn't figure out how to close up some of the spaces. That's all. <laughs> so, although Berkshire Educational Resources K-12 is not a public body under Massachusetts law, its physical or virtual meetings are held in public, the press and public are invited to attend, and an audio or video record or both may be made of each meeting. For these reasons, no one attending a physical or virtual task for... Oh, still haven't changed that. Uh, Burke 12 meetings should have an ex expectation of privacy as regards her or his image, behavior, or utterances made during the meeting. Um, do we have any visitors here who have not been here before, who are mm -hmm. unknown? Two from the press, who I think are known, but they're here, which is great. Okay. Yeah. Sean and Eileen. Welcome to the, welcome to the fourth estate. Uh, first item on the agenda, <clears throat> excuse me, is approval of minutes from the June 11th, 2022 meeting. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move. Is there a second? Second. second? Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Are there any changes that seem warranted in the meet in the minutes? No, nice work, Liz. Once again, thank you, Liz, for all you do for us. Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor of accept, approving the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those who are opposed, the minutes are approved. The next item has to, go, to do with ongoing advocacy for funding and Burke 12. Uh, I, can, <clears throat> I can give you a little bit of information. I've been in touch with um, the members of the legislative delegation uh, about the possibility of, of uh, Burke 12 receiving funding from the state's either surplus or ARPA funds. 
we had originally met Jake and, and Ellen, and I'm going to leave somebody out, Andrea probably, and, and I had met with um, me staff members from the Ways and Means Committee. This is at the start of the budget, the state budget process. Uh, I want to thank uh, Representative Barrett for organizing that. He's a member of the Ways and Means Committee. And we had made an ask uh, at the behest, actually, of uh, Representative Pignatelli for $200,000 per year for each of the next three years. That is the fiscal year that's now begun. And uh, the FY24 and FY25. Um, that was not to be uh, Representative uh, Farley. Oops, I'm sorry. Jake, can you take over with the sure. presentation? Yeah, I mean, we can also come back to this too, but um, Bill tells the story so much better than I do. Um, <laughs> so um, we have been going back and forth with... Um, the delegation since that initial ask. And as you know, at the last meeting, we talked about whether or not it make it, had it made it through various parts of the um, budget development process. Um, I think what Bill was about to say was that Representative Farley, when we contacted him about that, um, uh, ended up saying that what they ended up putting into the budget was a $75,000 earmark. So it wasn't the full $200,000 ask. Um, that $75,000 earmark um, is making its way through the budget um, successfully thus far. Uh, and so we're fairly um, assured that we're going to um, end up with that as additional funding resources for this year. And you'll see that built into my budget in a few minutes. However, um, it when the state started talking, this is probably about a month ago about all the surplus money they had and how there was gonna be a supplemental budget. Um, we thought it wise, and I think we actually discussed that last meeting to go back out to the um, governor's office. Bill, if you wanna jump back in, this is where um, Brian was very supportive in sending a message to the governor. Yes, he was. Um... Unfortunately, we we seemed not to uh, strike oil in that with that contact. Uh, so I'm I'm not sure what you were able to cover when I was. I just covered talking. that uh, the two hundred thousand got trimmed to a seventy five thousand seventy five thousand dollar earmark, which managed to make its way through the reconciliation project process. Mm -hmm. So the state budget is voted on an up or down vote. There aren't amendments apparently accepted, and so. Uh, we're confident that the $75,000 is in the bank. Um, I've been in touch with the other members of the delegation, with, or with the members of the delegation, about, as I said at the outset, um, us uh, being able to get through uh, the ARPA funding or possibly the surplus, what we had originally asked for, which would be 75,000, we've gotten that. Another 125,000 for this year, 200,000 for FY24, 200,000 for FY25. Sounds like a lot of money, but it's actually um, about one thousandth of 1% of the amount that the state has to expend. And so it, didn't, it doesn't seem unreasonable, although we have to recognize there are demands from all over the place for, the, for funding. Uh, and I heard back from <clears throat> um, Representative and State Senate candidate Paul Mark favorably. He actually, um, he said he, he supported that and he would do what he could to see, to, to realize it. And I saw Representative Mark at an event on Thursday and he reiterated the fact that he was supporting this and that he would push for the funding. So... I don't know. I don't know anything more than than that at the moment, um, but we're. I, I'm. I don't. I don't know that I'm optimistic, but I'm not discouraged. Let me put it that way. 
So we have the 75,000 in the year mark. We're still looking for additional funding, which I think if we can get it would both stabilize what we uh, stabilize our, our basic day-to-day -day operations and also make it possible for us to do more uh, work through the, the study groups and so forth that we have, so. That's great, Bill, thank you. I think the only thing I want to just impress upon um, the members of the board and those who are on the call um, is that um, we've had a lot of support. Um, Brian Fairbank, um, obviously um, we helped to craft an, uh, a text that he sent to the governor. The governor was very um, responsive, um, which we appreciate Brian's work for that. But he basically, his response was, there's a lot of money already in the schools and in the communities. Um, and there's a lot of money that's not been spent yet. Um, is there any way to get access to that? So that's, that's, that was a fine answer. Um, and then I just wanna really point out that Bill has been on a letter writing campaign, email writing campaign, and he's written to everyone multiple times, phone calls, went to events. Um, so really appreciate all the work that Bill is doing right now to support this. Um, and then finally, um, I know we have some folks who are, we're gonna be talking about the, the bodies of work that were involved in, but one of our biggest bodies of work is the work in South County. And the South County um, effort right now is running on fumes. And um, you know we've been able to subsidize um, my time, some of the research team's time down there, and that's been incredibly helpful to, to them and they're really appreciative for that. So if we were to come into 200,000, it just provides not only a kickstart for us, but a kickstart for one of our core areas which is research planning, research and planning uh, and facilitation around regionalization and collaboration work, in this case in South County. So um, that still is a gap. Um, and I'll run you through the budget in a minute, but I, I just wanted to really thank everyone who's been, Ellen's been helpful in getting sort of inside intel on the budget process. So everyone's had a hand in this thing. So Bill, I'm good on that item. Okay, um, we, we, why don't we move on then to the Rural Commission report, Jake? Yeah, um, I, I have a slide in here and I'll just click to it real quick. Um, so I'm thinking about two weeks ago now, um, a email was uh, circulated through the state news um, and it was picked up, I, I, th I think actually Ellen picked it up and sent it out to a few of us. Um, but I think as you are aware, and as I re have reported in various meetings, um, we've been asked to speak to the Rural Commission um, a few times. And the Rural Commission is a, a group that grew out of the Student Opportunity Act. Um, and that act basically said that um, they recognize the complexities of rural schools um, they don't quite necessarily have enough information to build all the rural schools nuances into the formula. So they want a study team to be put together to come up with a set of recommendations. So um, since then, uh, as, since the Student Opportunity Act was passed, uh, this rural commission was formed. Um, Adam Hines, as you know, our senator, uh, was one of the leads in the group. Um, and recently it released its draft report. I actually, I can't find a copy of the draft report anywhere publicly. I have one, but I don't know if I'm supposed to distribute it yet. Um, but it was synthesized um, in this news report. And um, I assume that the final draft, the final report will be, will be public as soon as it is it's edited and such. But I'll just read you a, a quick excerpt from it. It said, this was July 12th. Lawmakers, K-12 school leaders, and academic experts voted unanimously Tuesday to send uh, to the legislator a batch of suggestions for helping districts in the most sparsely populated parts of Massachusetts um, help them navigate financially perilous straits amid periods of declining enrollment, shaky tax revenues, and high cost of transportation for students. So that all sounds familiar to us, right? Um, like we could have written it. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> So they identified some challenges, declining enrollment, higher operational costs per pupil, transportation, and also reduced uh, supports for students in terms of access and opportunities, all things we've been talking about. The recommendations were things like uh, increasing incentives for regionalization, common for combining, collaborating, and sharing services, um, decreasing disincentives uh, towards regionalization, 
Uh, increasing the uh, low enrollment per pupil aid from $50 to 200, which would be a pretty big boost for some of the districts. Mm -hmm. uh, making adjustments to transportation, fi uh, special education, health insurance. And then um, they did actually lead into this issue of school choice, which we've talked a lot about on the board. And I'm not quite sure where they're going from it uh, with it yet, but um, they do have some language in there that talks about a school choice cap, um, which would mean limiting the number of kids and or limiting the, the fiscal liability to the sending district, not the receiving district, but the sending, and then potentially pumping up what the receiving district receives in aid. Um, so that th th those things are, to me, are a bit concerning. Um, and so I won't weigh in those. We actually did testify in school choice and um, my very simple talking points were it's, it's a half measure. It needs to go one direction or the other, either fully fund it and create a competitive uh, educational environment, um, assign real per pupil values in charge them, um, and th that'll change the, the scene pretty fast, or get rid of it, um, and that'll change the scene real fast. But this half measure of $5,000, $7,500 is just, it's, it's sort of this purgatory we're, we're in with school choice. And um, so anyways, I wanted just to let you all know that this Rural Commission report, as soon as it is final, I will send it to you all. Um, we had a bit of a hand in sort of informing it, and I do think there will be some implications. One of the places that I'm, I'm hopeful of is I do think money will flow into the districts, in the rural districts in, in Berkshire County, and we'll see a little bit of a bump. But we also may see some set-asides for funding streams that incentivize or support regionalization and collaboration efforts. So this is where I think the money that didn't make it into the state budget this year, that regionalization $500,000, which we've been drawing from now for three years, um, uh, would be backfilled. So um, no news yet, but we're watching it closely. And, and I thought it would be important for the board just to be aware of this particular item. What, what is the timeline for all of that, given that, you know, people like to go on vacation? And <laughs> yeah, I know. That's an excellent question, you know, because um, even with our earmark, um, mm. you know, earmark is approved in the state budget, which I think I don't think the state budget has been fully signed and everything yet, unless someone on this call knows otherwise. It seems to be breaking every single day, but I believe it was expected to be signed or, or completed um, in, in short order. Um, but then the money actually gets funneled through an agency. In this case, it will be the Department of Education. Right. So there may be some, um, you know, as we found out with the FC 191 money, you know, it's approved on August 1 and it's not released until October 1. And there's this big period of time between then where it's running through their grant system, their setup system and all that stuff. So, so in response to the Rural Commission, I think there will be, uh, if, if money uh, is attached to that, there'll probably be a process that will um, you know, emerge in the next you know, three to six months, realistically. But then they only gave what, like four months to spend it as well, so. That's right. Yeah, we did. Actually, we did talk about that. We talked about and I, I didn't um, I'm not sure I read. I think I actually read that in the report. We talked about multi year funding streams mm -hmm. because this idea of money coming in in January or December and then having to spend it by July one just and, and because regionalization collaboration is such a community driven process. Um, and in the case of South County, you know, every meeting is an open public meeting. Right. So they're a public body. So everything is posted, it's gotta be scheduled. I mean, it's really, it's really, um, it's a lot of work. Um, and that means it moves slower because of all that. Yeah. So I do agree with you on the timing. Um, and I, I believe the Department of Ed Education, when I talked to our liaison, Michelle Griffin is incredibly sympathetic, um, but her hands are tied. She's, she has got nothing to do with the decisions, you know? We did ask for extensions, they said no. Um, so I think the idea was that there was so much money flowing around this year that no one wanted an additional pot of money flowing around. So, Can I ask a tangential question? Um, I'm not trying to take us down bunny trails, but one of the things I'm wondering is, is there a way to, uh, I don't know how to express this. I know in California, we had you know, preferred vendors who were experts in whatever subject we were working on. Is there any way for Burke 12 to have a role like that? Yeah, um, that's a good question, uh, Vanessa. 
So like a sole source vendor mm -hmm. or uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we're actually making that argument in some of the contracts we're writing right now okay. because these are people who've been at the table. I mean, you can't replace Brendan Sharon who's been running portraits right. for a year and a half, right? We roll his contract right. in for and forward. Um, so he'd be considered sole source, but there's also a process to get approved to be on like a state bid list. So those are things we can certainly think about. We've had a little bit of outreach from some other districts about the work we're doing and potential interest in maybe um, borrowing our expertise or using our expertise to help them go through similar processes. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thanks, good questions. All right, Bill. Okay, Jake, uh, the next, well, actually quite quite a few items here. I can, I can go pretty why don't you why don't you go ahead and take yeah it? i can go pretty quickly i i know it's um it's a beautiful day and people don't want to hear me yammering on all day um so i do put the slides together again so we can publish them i say this every single meeting and that people who maybe are new to the burke 12 or um you know or can't attend the meeting have some context uh, and so there are some repeat slides i'm going to move pretty pretty quickly oh, so this is not june 23rd however it's july 23rd. oh my goodness i gotta fix that this, i just did this last night <laughs> you're tired is you it, must be is, tired is it really july 23rd uh all right so this is a little bit of a fy22 wrap up and what we're doing as we look forward in, into fy23 this is the agenda for today but we'll move really um efficiently through it um, as you all know, our focus has been on uh, fiscal efficiencies, educational effectiveness, and uh, access opportunity and equity for students with the idea of um, elevating the highest quality education across the Berkshires. Um, our mission, which we redeveloped this winter, which was right now I'm writing the final report for a grant, really great to talk about um, the process our board went through this year uh, to update the mission and the name, um, but this is basically um, what we believe in, and again, uh, both short and long-term solutions, short being helping districts in the near term, the right now, to collaborate with each other in the longer term, thinking forward, saying, hey, as enrollment continues to decline, can we maintain the, the districts in the configuration that they're currently in? Ultimately, we want to make sure that kids uh, have access to high-quality education, regardless of where they go to school in Berkshire County. And really distilled down, um, this all boils down to really helping districts to improve, improve their capacity um, to deliver education, whether that's um, across district lines in collaboration or whether that's combining districts into larger configurations uh, that helps them again to expand what they do. Um, again, lots of resources on our website. Um, I know I've asked a few members to start doing, helping me do a little bit of scan of the website. Um, I think that I've been less attentive to our website and more attentive to the South County's website, but um, any help that folks can offer and um, crit critique would be useful as we move ahead. It's a good time of year to sort of check in on the website. Um, we've had lots of people work for us uh, over the last year. This is sort of a short list. I wanted to just click to the next slide because this is where we are currently with sort of our workforce and I've organized it into buckets. So our Burke 12 team is um, definitely, it's, it's a, we're a lean team, but it's myself, Brendan and Bill Ballin sort of uh, forming the leadership, the management team in effect. And then uh, Mary Nash and Catherine McKean who've been working to do particular tasks around evaluation uh, and uh, funding. Um, on the South County side, we've got a bunch of people who've been in and out connected, but currently, it's Rob, Frank, um, who's on the call. Rachel Bree's doing a transportation study. The Abrahams Group, um, Ken Rock, and uh, Russ Dupre. You'll see Sarah Carlton's down on this list. Sarah still remains connected to the project and is a resource, but um, she really has wanted to <laughs> retire, retire, um, but she makes herself very available. Um, and then we have um, some specialists who come in in particular situation like Mass Association of Regional Schools recently to help us do work. Of course, I can't um, thank Berkshire Col Community College and Berkshire Regional Planning Commission enough for all their work they've done to support lots of backbone stuff we do. We already talked about advocacy, um, so let's get into the budget. Uh, and I'm, I tried to work on some budget slides without confusing everybody. And I'm sure I probably will confuse everyone, but 
Um, so three buckets, what's ended. These are the grants which are closed as of FY22. Uh, and we had a good chunk of money come in through the 191 grants, the 421, which is the BRLI, the portrait, the bar planning donations, and then our first round of the um, Rural Innovations Grant, which is FC 123. So uh, our funds for this year, um, sort of what's new or what's continuing. We have a second year on the bar planning money. Um, we have the bigger um, part of our Rural Innovations Grant, the FC 123, 206,000. Um, we have a couple of um, donations from organizations, MASC and the Mass Workforce Board. We have leftover donations, which goes all the way back to the BRLI stuff, um, which we're gonna be rolling in. Um, uh, contribution from Fiegenbaum. Um, we're probably the big announcement today, which if you haven't heard, um, you're about to hear, which is we just won another two-year portrait of a graduate um, grant. And so that's half a million dollars for um, the next two years. So I, I'm Fantastic. stealing, yeah, I'm stealing Brendan Sharon's thunder. Um, but he deserves a huge amount of credit for all the work he did with the team, putting together a solid um, proposal um, and really going back and forth with Barr for quite a while uh, to refine ours. We are the first team. I'll, I'll let him talk about it later. Um, so then um, over here on the what's possible is a legislative earmark. You know, I, I'm feeling fairly confident that's coming in. Uh, rural aid, um, which maybe if I had mentioned a few minutes ago, that could come in. We're watching some other grants. The new schools venture funds didn't pan out, but that doesn't mean we're not going to go after other grants and foundations. And then um, we've talked, uh, you know, again about is there room to continue to seek uh, donations regionally or even locally? Um, so these are all things that could uh, sort of feed into the what's possible part of the budget. So just quickly, this is the last time I'll show you FY22 and then we're done with it. Um, but these are the FY22 budgets um, and you'll just see how each of these um, sort of closed out. I'm not gonna read every line. I'm happy to send you the PowerPoint so you have, if you wanna study a little bit more detail, but at the last meeting, you all approved final spending for our um, 120, um, 191 grant. And so we spent it on um, dual um, enrollment course planning this National Institute of Out-of-School Time Training for out-of-school time providers in Berkshire County. We're building a promotional brochure that Mary Nash is uh, starting. I'll show you a peak today. And then we contribute additional hours towards um, Abraham's group and uh, towards the South County effort. Um, so we're, I'm finishing the final report. I got to have it done by the end of this week. Um, and then the South County uh, grant, the Regional School District Planning Board, that is all spent down. I think we're then, we're then $11. So that's great. Um, and I'll be doing their final report too. The 421, which is the BRLI is officially closed. Um, Brendan is, I think he just buttoned up their final report. Uh, and so he'll be submitting that next week. If he hasn't already hit sent, he might've done that yesterday. We were exchanging versions, he, Bill and I over the last work, but that, most of that is, uh, is Brendan's, um, you know, his writing. The portrait from last year is all spent down and the application for years three and four, as I just mentioned, has been approved and we'll be submitting a final report on that. And then the bar planning money for year one is closed. We did, we were 15,000 under. So we're rolling that money into FY23 and I submitted a, a mid-year report on June 15th. A lot's going on with the closing out of fiscal year 22, but we are just about there by the end of this week. It's, Usually they give you a month after to close out the grant. So that's why this is the last week of July and we will be closing it out. That's great. So these are, um, these are our revenue sources for the coming year, um, sort of all told up. Um, and you'll see how these all fit in. Be careful about this 500,000 here. We don't have 500,000 for this year. We have 500,000 for two years. So it's 250,000 for you know, 22, 23, and then um, 200,000 for 23, 24. Um, and then everything in red is what I'm calling quote, sort of speculative money at this point. So the earmark isn't in hand, the partnership money is beginning to flow in. And so we're feeling good about that. And then donations would really be as we go out. So we have about $690,000 in hand, with about 788 
uh, speculated as, as, as I would say, probable. I can pause here for a minute if you have any questions. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. So it's, it's a good amount of money. But I, one thing I just want to caution is that, and I said this to the executive team we met about a week ago, is that there's a lot of fixed expenses. This looks like a lot of money. But when you unpack like the portrait grant, this is the $250,000 for one year. A lot of these costs really are fixed. We don't, we don't have a lot of flexibility in this money. It's not like money we, that, that the um, Burke 12 can just use for anything. It's specific to very um, uh, particular parts of our application. We do have money for project management, um, but there's a lot of money that goes directly into the schools and into programs. FC 123 is a very similar situation. Uh, Bill is really going to be helping to manage that. And really, of, of, of 286,000, we only have 15,000 project management. It's really not a lot um, because all this money goes towards very specific uh, targeted funding. We want to get the, the, the money, obviously, to the degree we can in the hands of the schools uh, and programs to support kids. So I, I point that out because it looks like a lot of money on the surface, but there's, there's, we're still scratching a little bit for administrative backbone money. Does that make sense for everybody? Jake, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you indicated earlier in the week when we talked that um, you need authorization from the uh, the board here. Sorry. To, to uh, is this an opportune time to do to? Uh, well, I li literally wrote myself a note in a slide which I just read right over. Okay. <laughs> So there it is. We do need a formal Burke 12 vote to accept the transfer from the Berkshire County Superintendent's Roundtable. So just so people understand this, as you all know, at the last meeting, we talked about this relationship with the Berkshire County Superintendent's Roundtable. Bill is on the, on the call here. Um, Bill has acted as the executive secretary to the roundtable. We pitched an idea to them. The idea is a whole scale um, was not accepted in terms of the entire roundtable for the for the reasons I sketched out at the last meeting. Uh, but what they recommended is we go out and we go district by district and develop um, a an agreement with each of the districts, which we have done. Um, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But the roundtable had money that was dedicated to professional development, which we are going to assume management of. So that's the November professional development day, and then up to four other professional development opportunities um, that we're going to be working on. So as a result, they are transferring money that they had in their account for those purposes to our account. So I've made a request to them. They just requested the board formally approve the transfer, uh, and I put that into the memo. That also includes a $10,000 grant. It's the last of a three-year $30,000 grant from Williams College to support professional development. And that's included there, although that money will come directly to Burke 12. Thanks, Bill. So can I have a motion from a member of the board to authorize? You tell, tell me exactly what the wording is that Jim Brosnan so. Yeah, I think that Burke 12 accept the transfer from the Berkshire County Superintendent's Roundtable for professional development funding. That's probably fine. So moved. So moved. It's moved. And was there a second? Second. A second, if I wasn't the first. Is there <laughs> any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Right. Thanks for catching that, Bill. Thank you. All right. So the final thing is, you know, what are we looking to budget and pay for? So this is sort of a very um, loosely knit working network um, of things. Let me just bring this up. Um, so I just wanted to highlight this top box because this is your admin team right now. It's myself, Brendan, and Bill. And we're each serving in slightly different roles. Um, I will be your overall manager um, and also be heavily involved in um, serving as a project manager and the research lead, lead in South County. Uh, and I think you all know at this point, a good, good chunk of my time is being spent on that project. Um, um, but 
I'll give you an update on that in a minute. I think it's 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 time and, and energy well invested. Um, Brendan will be managing Portrait, which is probably our most important project in many ways. Um, I'd say beyond the South County research because it's um, got a, a real up. We, we've done great work. We've developed a strong relationship with Bar and. Um, we want to continue, I think, to have an impact on how the high schools are sort of moving forward with their philosophy and approach towards educating high school kids. Um, and then he'll also be supporting additional um, you know, areas such as thinking about how we continue BRLI in some shape or force, uh, shape or manner, professional development um, and, and things of that sort. Bill will be managing mostly, and I didn't even put it up here, the 123 grant but also serving as um, in the same way he served on the on the round table, which is helping to manage the uh, common November PD day. He and Brendan basically do that together, um, the professional learning networks, and then uh, depending if we have money, uh, being the lead on the study action teams. So that's basically the, the in a broad sense, the three um, individuals who are gonna be, you know, sort of manning the ship. Um, additional things that we're looking to invest in um, would be the study action teams, obviously the professional development, professional learning um, networks. And then we do have a little bit of wiggle room in the bar money um, to do additional consulting work um, and analysis, which mostly has been targeted towards South County. Um, but um, there is a little bit of money, about uh, maybe 15 to 20,000 that we have to, to do some work in those areas. And, and that's very the reason that I don't put that into administration is because that's very, we, we've made a promise to bar. That's how we're using the money. And so that's how we need to use the money. Um, so um, everything in red on this grid is not paid for yet. So um, the needs, obviously things that we're looking to raise additional money for would be, you know, um, I think we have a little bit of supplies and travel, but there's, it's pretty thin. Um, we want to pay for the website. We've got to pay for this year, but then I'd like to pay it a year forward. We don't have a lot right now, really anything can be in marketing or outreach or PR. Our contract with um, TMS is now done. Um, I'll show you a snapshot on the dashboard, which we paid for. So we, we have in effect a year with open architect, but if we want to maintain that forward, we'd have to invest on that. And then, I still think we could use more money in consulting and there's, there's plenty more we could do if we had money. But um, so the study action teams right now are not funded. Um, and as you're gonna see up here is I'm not fully funded yet. Um, and I did talk to the executive team about that. Um, and I'm okay sort of taking a flyer on that. If the earmark comes in, which we're pretty confident on, then I'll be funded and the study action teams will be funded. So we're kind of hedging our bets there. But for me, I needed to get these, these two individuals in place <laughs> to make sure that we were in good shape to move forward these initiatives. Um, these are coming up real fast, November PD, and the portrait is launching this summer. I needed to make sure that Brendan and Bill were settled and ready to go and are already going. The 123 grant is in motion. Uh, and then we've got to do things we've promised to do, like the November PD and the PLN. So. Um, it doesn't mean I don't have any money allocated at this point, but uh, I'm not completely whole yet, but feeling okay about it. Um, so this is where we are with budget. I don't know if there's um, any particular questions. Probably at the next meeting, I'll have a, a clearer sense of where we are once the earmark is in hand, and I can give you really a, a more of a line item budget uh, to show you how we're intending to spend it. But um, I'd say at the last meeting, I was... Um, uh, you know, a little worried. I'm feeling a little better now uh, in terms of having gone through really, really carefully all of our funding streams and sort of earmarked things to be spent in particular ways and then reviewed that with the executive team. Jake, you, you, did I hear you say that the South County group uh, funding is running thin? And yes. if so, what are they doing about it? And how does that have an impact on you and your workload? Yeah, so right now they're running, um, what, they, what they have available is um, they had two funding streams for this past year. They had money from the SV191 grant, right. and they'd received, um, I believe it was $8,000 from each of their eight towns. They had 64,000. We used about 12,000 at 64, so they're sitting on 52,000 that they've been careful, that they've carefully not used. 
we have a budget to carry that project through the end of September. So that's where we are. Um, and then at that point, um, you know, I'll be again sharing this with you. I can just kind of preempt it, but we're going town by town right now and doing presentations. Um, the chair, Lucy Prashker, um, with me in support. Frank Cody has been going with us too as part of the team. And, um, and one of the questions we've been asking is, um, you know, one of the points we've been making is we're going to be running out of money and we may want to be looking at additional funding um, coming back to the towns for another ask um, to continue the work forward. Um, still optimistic about the rural money and our uh, potential to access that. Um, and um, we also know that um, there are some discretionary funds within the districts that could be potentially um, you know, earmarked for this regionalization work. So there's a couple things in motion. Okay. Um, and then you know, some of our expenses on, the, on that project, um, like one of our areas of work is ed visioning. So they've got to do some visioning work around the potential new high school. Mm -hmm. well, well, Berkshire Hills is just, um, what um, just got a capital investment from their towns of about one and a half million dollars to do um, some of the pre-work in this eligibility phase. And some of that could be, again, earmarked for the envisioning work. So we may be able to pull it from different sources. Okay. Um, so that's probably the best answer I can give you right now. But uh, they, they've been pretty honest about the fact that um, it's a thin budget with a lot of work yet to do. Um, the idea again, is to get that project into a place where uh, they can vote on a regional agreement, make a decision where they wanna send it to the towns and then send it to the towns. Um, and then there's, there's gonna have to be an investment after that if they decide to go with it because you've got a, a whole transition period that's 12 to 18 months right. that needs to be supported, so. I just, I, I just wanted to make sure that, um, that they could continue to support your work or that you would end up coming back more full-time to us. So, yeah, I mean, right now, my intention is to continue to work down there. I, um, as many of you know, um, I had an offer. I declined the offer. Um, I'm not going to tell the whole story because it's not worth telling. Um, it was a great offer. I feel uh, humbled to have been offered that position, but there's work yet. There's work unfinished here that we need to carry through. And I'm really invested in the South County project. I appreciate you all giving me the time to work on it. And I think we're going to know a lot by January. And by January, um, it's I think we're going to have a sense of what direction we're headed. So. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving along, and I'm, I'm sorry, there's a lot, of, a lot of detail here, but I just want to make sure people are aware. As I mentioned earlier, the um, work with the um, districts um, has shifted from an entire roundtable endorsement to a district by district endorsement. And so with the help of Brendan and Bill who wrote up these agreements and, our, and Bill is actually going door to door talking to superintendents right now and I appreciate his work doing that. Um, we're asking them to sign onto these agreements, these partner agreements with Burke 12. And so uh, you'll see right uh, down on the list below, the districts that have signed on is yes. Um, we've got a couple possibilities, and then a couple of no's. Um, and then and, and the no's just so you, so, so you're aware, are not a resounding shut the door, no. Um, it's that um, McCann and Central Berkshire um, already have things scheduled for the Common Professional Development Day in November. And so they didn't necessarily see the value in participating in this particular project. It wasn't a, a no to Burke 12. It was really just a no to investing the money on PD. And I don't know, Bill, if you want to jump in, you're welcome to provide any detail. Well, um, I think it would be unfair to say we weren't disappointed uh, that those two districts right now, and I have meetings with Lennox and Lee uh, this week coming up with their superintendents and um, we're uh, <coughs> contacting uh, Jake McCandless at Mount Greylock again. <coughs> um, I think, you know, the bigger picture here is that we, we really wanted the round table to give us an endorsement, which was basically just in name only. We all, we all realized from the very beginning that we would have to work with each individual district <clears throat> on, on an agreement and to, and to get funding from them. Um, so we're happy that most of the districts in the county 
realize the value in participating in this organization. If the districts that do not want to send staff to some of our programs, including the November day, we will, Jake and Brendan and I will work on a, um, a financial amount that they'll have to pay per individual person to participate per staff person. <clears throat> so what we're trying to say, and I had a meeting, for example, in Southern Berkshire this week, <clears throat> was that it was it's really to their advantage to be part of Berk 12 because then they can participate in all the activities that we sponsor. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that we're angry that a couple of districts aren't interested, but we're hoping that eventually everybody will come to see the value in participating with us. I think that's that's where we want to let this lay at this point. Thanks, Bill. So um, the last thing I just want to let you know is the what we've agreed to do, because this is now, now that we're taking some money from the districts and um, we we're charging, what is it, Bill? Three dollars a student, right. up to three thousand. Correct. So no one pays more than three thousand. Although we did have a conversation with Pittsfield um, about the potential for them to um, contribute a bit more, um, given the size of the district. But anyways, that being said, um, we're going to do the November PD day. We're going to manage the PLNs, and then we're going to offer at least one or two, up to two um, per semester, total four professional development workshops during the school year. And so we'll be looking and working with the superintendents on what topics they want, um, whether they want outside experts brought in. And we think that'll be a, a really good opportunity to um, hopefully meet their needs. Uh, and then these other things down here, you know, um, obviously as funds allow the study action teams um, seeking collaborative grants like we did with the 123. Um, and really being an on-demand resource when they when they need help. So, so anyways, um, we're ex I'm excited that we've sort of pieced this together after sort of the, the whole, um, you know, the sort of the, the general, um, not rejection, but, um, you know, really the, um, the, you know, the, the unwillingness for the entire uh, district as a whole to endorse us that we really have pieced it together on a district by district basis. Any questions on that? No, that's a great result. Great. All right, so uh, quickly running through our projects that we're up to, and I will, um, I know some people are following the South County work uh, pretty closely, and we have a couple of the reporters who, close, who closely monitor um, a lot of meetings <laughs> that we go to. Um, so we are doing research modeling advising as we um, will in other regions, but right now we're focused on South County. Um, this is the website. I encourage anyone uh, to go to the website. This particular snapshot is from the news tab. Um, and I will apologize to our news folks on the, on the call because I think I'm a little bit behind on posting articles. But if you go back and you read some of the articles, you will see that there's, a, there's an arc to the storyline. And um, I think, you know, if nothing else, it's work, worth reading some of those. Um, lots of resources on the website, though. Um, we did a big community convening, and this is one of the slides from the convening. I was told that this 100 plus total meetings is wrong. It's closer to 125 total meetings. That and These are all public hosted meetings, yeah, it's a lot of meetings. So um, I think two weeks ago we had a meeting, um, I think we had six meetings in one week with the towns and with our board, our subcommittee. So a lot going on. Um, the process right now, it's, um, I describe it as a three-phase process. Um, phase one occurred before we arrived. They did some initial baseline work. We have basically supported the management through phase two, um, which is really working through the context setting all the way up to the preferred model. Right now we're in phase three, which is doing additional deeper dive research, doing community outreach, and really developing a draft regional agreement that will ultimately um, you know, if, if um, approved by the board, will be sent to the towns. A lot of work has got to happen between now and then. And I'll just sketch some of that out. Um, I won't go through all these slides because you've seen a lot of them. You know, the essential question about working together, our research questions. I put these in every slideshow so people who maybe um, are not able to participate or are new can go back and look at them. Um, this was our um, final report which again, I encourage people to continue to go back and read. I think it's a good solid piece of work that seems to be standing 
the test of time, even though it's only been a few months, but it, it's, it's holding so far. Uh, and then the preferred recommendation uh, of the board, which was voted in April to um, consider the formation of a K-12 region that merges um, the two districts with a single high school um, and maintains all the elementary and middle schools as they currently exist. So we're working on that. These are our, our project areas right now, community outreach and engagement, advisioning, regional agreement. We're doing some operational analysis and then lots of advocacy. Um, I won't do this slide, but I just wanted, to, I put this slide up last night because I just wanted to sort of hit the highlights of what we're working on. We did a big community convening too, uh, the last week of June. Um, uh, we're really working a lot on our documentation and our talking points because a lot of this right now is, is really sharing um, what we've done as a group and sort of where they are um, in the process and what they're recommending uh, and what needs to happen next. Uh, so we're doing outreach to the towns. We've done seven of eight select boards. We have Great Barrington on Monday, and we're doing additional meetings like uh, we did a um, meeting with the um, at the Sheffield Senior Center, which was, I thought, well attended, and it was really interactive with the folks there. So Lucy and I, um, with Frank often in the car, um, are traveling around the South Berkshire, basically doing these presentations, and Lucy does a tremendous job, and I'm there really to support um, you know, specific questions um, that come up in the meeting. Um, we're preparing for ed visioning work. Um, we're uh, assembling right now the Regional Agreement Advisory Group, which will launch, I think, the second week of August. We're about halfway through our transportation study, which I think is probably going to come in the middle to the end of August completed. Um, what's interesting about that study is that we're looking at um, um, obviously a deeper dive than we did on sort of the mechanics of ride times and costs related to transportation if the districts were to merge. But we're also looking at um, two big scenarios. What would happen if all the kids attended the school that they currently attend? But secondly, it was what would happen if they attended the school which was geographically closest to them? So you have kids, if you look at the geography of South County, every single one of the seven towns touches Great Barrington. So you can have kids and families in those towns actually have, you know, a 10 minute drive to the Great Barrington campus and a 35 to 40 minute ride to the Sheffield or New Marlboro campus. So the point being that um, we're gonna model for the sake of exercise, what would happen if we move kids around based on where they live. Um, and I suspect that's gonna be um, something that the board would have to grapple with uh, in terms of policy, but it's an, it'll be an interesting set of data. We're going deep into assessment with the Abrahams group, slicing and dicing it every way we possibly can. And what we know for sure is if assessments go up in one town or two towns and down significantly in one or two towns and significantly down in other towns, that it's a non-starter, it's not gonna work, right? So we're trying to come up with assessment systems that balance um, assessment over time, apply savings, um, and so it's been a really interesting set of exercises and we're gonna be bringing that to the regional agreement um, working group to dig through and respond to. And then lots of advocacy. We've got big questions on timing and process and votes. Here's an example. So if the board approved uh, the regional agreement um, draft in let's say January and it was sent to the towns in May, um, you know, how would we manage the question of the high school the shared high school, given that, given that the vote on the shared high school would happen at some point further down the road. Um, so there's a lot of sort of chicken egg stuff going on with both the high school project and the regional agreement in terms of what happens in what order. So we're gonna have to be super creative. We're gonna have to work with, I think the, the local um, boards and we're gonna have to work with the state, um, both MSBA and DESE um, as this rolls forward. I think it's, it's somewhat, unique territory, as you might expect. Mm -hmm. So just a few things. This is a snapshot from our community convenings. If you want to see a synthesized report of the two community convenings, it's listed under resources at atowns.org. These are snapshots from that. And Mary Nash did a great job capturing um, the two days. We had um, well over a hundred people participate um, and Ben Klomp is facilitated uh, and I thought we got some great feedback there. Um, 
I wanted to just show you how we're beginning to put together these, what we call fact briefs. Fact briefs are folk, uh, things that are focused on a particular topic. They tend to be one to two pages long, sort of graphically interesting. They're on the website. So these two, one is on career vocational technical ed. The other I think is on uh, the board process. So um, trying to really work hard to give people digestible nuggets of information because the final report is just really long to get through. And so how do you distill those into talking points that um, are easy for folks to access? And these are, this is one example. Um, we're putting together ed visioning uh, work and we're, we had a, a big ed, ed subcommittee this week, which, um, you know, there's still a lot of differences of opinions about how we get through this, but my core um, focus on ed visioning is really um, finding ways to put the two districts together in a space where they can begin to exchange um, information about what's happening in each of the two districts. So they get to, they learn to get to, they learn more about each other, begin to develop relationships, to begin to develop trust. Um, but then secondly, begin to also do some design work about what a shared region would look like. I think it's gonna be really important that this work is co-designed because if it's designed by one district or the other, it'll feel like, well, you guys designed it and we're just sort of asked in or forced in. And we really want this to be um, you know, a collaborative process. So we're organizing into four grade spans, maybe not grade spans, but topic areas, um, pre-K through four, middle grades, high school, and then we have a working group specifically on CVTE. So um, most likely, um, Rob will be facilitating the one and two middle grades and pre-K through um, four. Uh, Frank and um, with some support from Ken will be facilitating CBTE. And then we're working right now in the high school. We may be bringing in some folks from Bar who have some experience in the work we've been doing on high school reform to help us facilitate that conversation. Um, We've been working with Mars um, over the last 60 days. They completed some work with us and reported out the week after the 4th. Uh, and they've given us um, a lot of information about regional agreements, um, a lot of documentation. We actually have developed a draft regional agreement with some, um, some decision points in it. And you'll see that um, on the left-hand side, is um, sort of their overview of parts of a regional agreement and sort of what a contemporary regional agreement looks like. And on the right hand side is the beginning of this draft regional agreement, which will dig into the specifics of all the things that are in a regional agreement. So what we ended up doing in this particular draft was we started to thin down option areas, but also include like, you know, so member composition, school committee member composition, we're including, you know, what does Berkshire Hills do to, um, uh, to, uh, to identify and, and select school committee members and what does Berkshire Hills do? And then where, what are other ways in which districts um, approach uh, school committee um, composition um, as guided by state regulation? So um, these are things that are in this draft regulation, which will be the tool that we work through with the regional agreement uh, advisory group starting mid-August. Our timeline, again, you've seen this before, uh, tracks um, through to about December where we're gonna do deliberations. If we back up a month or two uh, and there's a desire still to bring it to the spring vote, we'll have enough time. But the idea is that you'd bring something to the towns in the spring to react to. Um, and so that's the goal at the moment. Um, lots of questions on the website if you choose to go there. And um, that's kind of the regional, that's the South County work. I don't know if there's any questions specifically on South County. A um, lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you're interested in um, seeing the presentation on Monday night, um, the Great Barrington Select Board will be having a virtual meeting. Um, and you probably can just go to the town website and the link will be right there. So um, that'll, we'll be on that agenda. I'm um, doing the presentation. You're welcome to tune in. So the second body of work is collaborative projects. And obviously we have ongoing this um, portrait of graduate professional development, professional learning network networks and the rural innovations. And then the possible category we have study action groups 
figuring out a way to piece together BRLI post funding and then additional collaborative projects that we funded. So um, I wanted just to very quickly give you an update on the study action teams. The team members have submitted sort of final reports, but there are some, there's, there's work that continues with the study action groups based on their recommendations. So I just wanted to point out that on the out of school time, we've paid for training for the national, it should be N-I-O-S-T, National Institute of School, out of school time, training for our out of school time providers. And that will be, that will occur this fall. Uh, and that's being um, managed by uh, one of our team leaders, Stacy Schultz. But I wanted just Brendan and Bill quickly to touch upon um, their work in the dual enrollment area, because um, Brendan's got a couple courses that they're floating, and then Bill on uh, how the planning for the November day is coming along. Yeah, Jake, I'll start off with the shared um, course piece if you'd like. Uh, so we have um, contributed some funding to support the development of several shared courses and pilot courses across our uh, high schools next year. And um, we are offering um, essential, essentially th three at the time, but it might expand. And we've been talking with Mass Hire about potentially collaborating on some things around the innovation pathways, but we are gonna be offering an astronomy course. Um, Jay White from BART is going to be the instructor and that dual credit will be coming through MCLA. And we're also gonna be offering English Comp 1 and 2 through BCC and Professor Nell McCabe is gonna be the instructor of that. Uh, both of these courses are going to uh, be offered during the school day, as I'm sure you can imagine, finding a time that work across all schools is completely impossible, but we tried to find a time that would maximize some representation in this pilot form throughout the year. Uh, the sort of tentative vision is that uh, you know, the students would have a live synchronous uh, course with these professors several days a week, two or three, as well as some asynchronous tasks and activities on the other days with some possible um, opportunities for in-person uh, experiences through the year. So we've been working with them and gathering some information uh, from interested kids and counselors uh, in the region. And we have an info session this Thursday for anybody who is uh, interested to learn more about either course. Uh, the Berkshire Eagle just uh, ran a uh, quick piece about that. And I'll just drop it in the chat um, if you wanted to share it with anybody who you think might be interested. So uh, just to wrap up, uh, principals, superintendents, uh, school counselors in the region have all received this um, several times throughout uh, June as well as early July. So we're hoping that we can run these in a good form in the fall and learn from it and maybe scale up for the future. Great, thanks. Then for Bill, I'm gonna have him hit two topics. Bill, can you hit professional um, develop, development and the 123 grant? Yeah, sure, I'll do that real quick for everybody. Um, planning continues for the professional development day in November. Um, we're meeting the PLN, uh, the uh, professional learning Professional Development Study Group will be meeting the first week in August. Uh, the RFP is out to all the teachers throughout the county and also to our community partners, all our uh, cultural groups and our colleges. <clears throat> a couple of highlights real quick. We are planning a couple of workshops for administrators in November. Mm -hmm. One is gonna be for um, primarily secondary administrators and superintendents on pre-indicators of school violence. We feel that is a uh, hot topic right now, unfortunately, in the country. And so we're, we want to um, do a workshop for administrators around pre-indicators of student violence that um, might find useful. And then we're also going to be running one for elementary principals uh, around case studies for um, specific topics that they can that they'd like to bring up to um, facilitators that's going to be facilitated by Marianne Young from MCLA and um, uh, Charles Miller who's our a professional learning network leader for elementary principals um, we'll again we'll be meeting the first week in August we're going to be going back to the teachers again normally what happens here is that um, the workshop uh, RFPs start coming in the end of August, early September, and then we put our catalog together for October and then get the registration. So that work is continuing right now. Um, professional Learning Networks will be offering a workshop in November. 
and then ongoing PD during the year for their groups. I just want to announce that we have added an 11th PLN this year for history, civics, and social studies mm -hmm. that is going to be chaired by uh, Leslie Herzberg from uh, the Berkshire Historical Society at Arrowhead. So we're really happy about that. Um, there's some good work that's being done in the civics area um, throughout the, the uh, county, especially at the middle and high school level. So we're really happy to have a 11th uh, PLN. And very quickly on the 123 grant, um, we finished up uh, fiscal year 23 funding and now we're moving in, uh, into fiscal, fiscal year 22 and now we're moving into fiscal year 23. This uh, about two weeks ago, we had a workshop for our college and career readiness teams based out of this grant, funded from the grant uh, at the Berkshire Innovation Center. We had close to 50 uh, staff from 12 districts around the county. We were really thrilled with the turnout. Uh, the surveys that were done indicated that everybody was very pleased and very satisfied with the workshop. Uh, that was run by uh, Mass Hires, uh, Heather and Kat from Mass Hires. Um, and they touched on connecting activities, career readiness resources, and um, did some uh, career planning mapping. It was a um, great workshop. We provided lunch. And again, we had 12 districts from throughout the county that participated with almost 50 people. In addition, we have funded several internships this summer through the grant uh, starting July 1. Um, we have about six or seven internships that we have funded through the BIC and also through our, some of our cultural partners. So we're really thrilled about that. And um, as you saw in the budget, we have monies available for um, this year, for the school year to fund several internships. We have uh, close to $100,000 available for that. And we're really excited about ramping up our internships with our college and career readiness teams and going after our area businesses to um, house, uh, house um, some of our interns, our interns this year. So we're really excited about this project and we feel it really goes along with the portrait of a graduate that Brendan's doing. So working closely um, with our teams and with the POG teams to, uh, to present these internships to our businesses and our, and our high schools. So we're moving forward. We're doing some great work with, um, with all our activities. And uh, I'll get back to Jake, let him finish Thanks. up. Thanks. So good segue into portrait. Uh, I'm going to hand it back over to Brendan. He's just got a couple slides to run you through in terms of where we are with portrait. <clears throat> and then we'll wrap it up. Great. Thanks, Jake. So as Jake mentioned earlier, we were uh, awarded um, $500,000 from the Bar Foundation for a two-year grant. Um, big thanks to all the teams and uh, the core facilitators and site leads from the schools who helped to craft a proposal that was compelling. We met frequently with uh, the foundation to kind of enhance the proposal and uh, you know clarify different portions because we also are pleased to announce that we're adding another school on with us this year. So we're gonna bring Hoosick Valley uh, on along with us. Um, Jake, next slide, if you could. The uh, participating high schools will be Pittsfield High, Taconic, Drury, Bart, and Hoosick. And at the, at the moment, we are really sort of engaged in summer planning and um, thinking through this next phase because um, we have a luxury this time of a two-year grant, and we've structured our outcomes and outputs to be sort of the sort of end uh, end results of our efforts. So we're thinking as to what would be the best um, activities and um, you know components to engage in in this year that'll build toward uh, the following, which will help us achieve those outcomes. Um, one thing I would like to mention is that in the past two years we had um, role types such as core facilitators. We only had a couple of those, one in the Pittsfield area um, this past year, Kristen Negrini, and then Kim Roberts Morandi, who's moved into a superintendent role in Sutton. She was sort of for the North County, but we've built into that budget to have a core facilitator, uh, a member of our leadership team from each district. So we think that that's going to expand representation and voice across the schools, as well as lead to, I think, better, um, better integration. 
And we're building up to have a community convening on Thursday, August 25th out at BCC in one of their freshly uh, renovated spaces. Um, and we're looking forward to that. And uh, some of you will likely get an invitation if you'd like to join us for a few hours in the morning. Uh, we'd love to have you be a part of that. In the next few years of the project, our, um, our priorities are as follows. Um, so first, we want to really engage educators in some common PD across the network schools and collaborative learning experiences to support their understanding, the integration, and the application of the competencies. So in short, we want to really help uh, teachers be able to embed this in their day-to-day -day practice, lessons, units, and um, how, they, uh, how they're working with kids. And that's really important. So one of our levers to do so is some common uh, professional learning across the network. And we're working through and planning how to do that uh, with our team currently. Uh, we certainly want to align um, the school efforts, district efforts to the POG vision and competencies, um, as well as, you know, areas such as NEASC and things like that, that all kind of uh, work together. We want to weave it together so it's sort of a seamless um, uh, integration of these, uh, of, of these aspects. And then lastly, we really want to build um, a deeper understanding and uh, integrate stakeholder voice, especially students. Um, as co-designers in this process uh, to enhance um, learning at the schools. And um, the community convening will certainly be a portion of that, but our teams are currently uh, working toward uh, bringing students onto their planning groups uh, and have them um, in them and working with them throughout the year. Next slide, Jake. So I wanted to just give you sort of a spotlight of two of the outcomes and the outputs. Uh, you know, outcomes for projects such as this are sort of how things are going to feel or look toward the end. Uh, outputs are really the more concrete, like what may we actually produce or really specifically engage in. So our first outcome that ties to this idea of alignment, um, by the end of our grant, we're going to have common PD experiences and school site visits. The practices and school design efforts will clearly be connected to the shared vision and portrait competencies. And building upon our alignment efforts from phase two, the schools and districts will have intentionally threaded Berkshire POG in their school and district planning efforts, as evidenced by the incorporation in school district planning documents, instructional planning artifacts, and samples of student work. So at the end of this project, we're going to see uh, more of these competencies and uh, practices embedded within, and um, the, uh, the artifacts should support that. And our team is talking deeply about that right now. And then really specifically the output and output we'll share with you now um, is that, you know, we're going to be learning through site visits. So each of our Berkshire POG network schools will visit and welcome at least two schools, two school teams in structured school site visits over the course of the grant period. Jake and I had had uh, visions of doing a lot of peer exchanges at the beginning of this project. Well, we all know the pandemic happened, and now we're able to kind of do more of that. So we're going to have uh, visits across. So, for example, Drury might welcome to Connick, or Bart might welcome Pittsfield High, or vice versa over the course of this grant. So we have a lot going on. And um, Jake, I'm not sure if the hyperlink is there, but um, the full outcomes and outputs, we'll make sure we get that up on the website for you to take a look at uh, at your leisure. I probably lost that in translation. Sorry about that. Oh, it's all good. And we did want to share with you some uh, updated graphics that we are working on and uh, trying to try to finalize. Um, so we have on the left sort of a poster style uh, graphic that will be large printed. Um, these are work done by graphic designer uh, Victoria Fiorini of Pittsfield. And on the right, um, you will see some you know descriptions of our competencies and the indicators there. You may recall the previous version that was sort of a resume style. We are developing a few graphics to use in different, um, you know, situations for different audiences. Uh, some, some for students, some for social media, some for educators that have more context and details. So, uh, we wanted to get sort of the Berkshire flavor, uh, a little bit of the, uh, you know, rural nature, but also with some of our cities and towns, and uh, kind of represent um, these competencies and the overall portrait um, for the region. So, we are working toward some updated graphics. So, you get a little preview today of uh, where we're going with this. Now, uh, briefly, I will um, touch on BRLI. I gave you um, a, a pretty good update, I think, at the last session about some of our spring activities, but um, I just completed the final report and sent off to DESE. And, um, you know, instead of going through a, a laundry list of things that would be, uh, you know, uh, I think regurgitating, regurgitating some of the previous updates, I wanted to focus on the four goals of the project that um, BRLI had set out to do and give you a couple of examples for each one. So the first goal of the BRLI project overall, which has been going on for almost two years, 
was to provide robust support for K-12 learning across multiple modalities. Uh, as I was reflecting and writing the report, I really felt that we did this very well over the course of the project and uh, pivoted to support teachers at the right moments. As we all know, we adopted a common learning management system, Canvas, at the beginning and provided a lot of support for educators to shift their courses online, provide educational resources and services uh, in a way where most folks weren't comfortable. And we supported uh, the schools to do so, as long, along with our champions who helped to be resources for teachers and administrators to really use that tool. So I think that's one of the main uh, significant um, you know, contributions we made is that we were there, we were helping, we were making sure schools were able to deliver services in ways they had never done before. Um, and toward the end of this project, uh, we had, you know, discussed what ways to bring in some shared courses across the region. So I had sp spoken previously about that. And the shared courses uh, certainly is another way for us to enhance K-12 learning um, in different ways, whether it's virtually or with some kind of in-person possibilities. The second goal, strong connections between local districts. Um, throughout the entire project in the various PDs we had run, uh, we had representation across school districts. Most recently at the Innovation Center, we had an elementary um, ed tech conference, about 30 educators, nine different districts represented. That was significant. Um, the countywide PD day is another example. In the beginning of the pandemic in 2020 fall, we had uh, uh, Bill was facilitating some learning modules for um, you know the region, and then this past year we went back to sort of in person with some virtual possibilities. So certainly a lot of strong connections being forged in the PD, but the champion network as people from all of our partner districts met consistently and worked on projects together over the course of the grant was very powerful. Um, collaboration, I think that goes hand in hand with what I had just said about um, you know the different PD options. In the spring, we were offering some things for administrators, for teachers, special education, arts integration. Um, we did a really good job with that, as well as with drop-in sessions throughout the project. Um, we had those hosted on our site as well for those who needed to um, you know uh, engage in them sort of offline. Um, and then uh, the final goal, um, testing promising solutions for the ongoing involving challenges here, uh, we engaged in a range of things. Um, certainly the shared PD is a highlight, but we also did some audits of our um, ed tech infrastructure and apps that we use across districts. We were um, thinking about um, doing some common educator goals that uh, connected with technology um, to incorporate in the um, evaluation and folks to you know, sign on to those and then engage in some PD in this coming November about that, uh, as well as those shared courses I had mentioned previously. So we, we had hit all of these goals in uh, significant ways, and uh, we had been highlighted a lot in the springtime, uh, both with DESE, with Learn Platform, with Canvas um, as sort of an exemplar and to share out those good things we've been doing. Um, so a lot was in that report um, as well. That'll also be linked on the website uh, for your uh, reading pleasure. And lastly, as we um, think about, you know, the future of BRLI, there's probably going to be from DESE, um, as well as another source, some, some, some possible grants. We met with our liaisons uh, in, in June from the Office of Ed Tech, and they were, you know, discussing possible grants as the state budget is still kind of being finalized. Um, they're not sure as to what um, pools of funds are available and what those grants will exactly be, but they're they're going to be um, informing us as they get more concrete details. And then as well as the uh, Mass Digital Equity Fund. So I believe that fund initially was a lot about connectivity. And we were on a call um, about a month and a half ago that was talking about how they want to expand that to um, be able to fund some different projects. And that uh, those details, I think, are still being finalized. So we have some possible tips and leads on funding for the next steps. And then, as Jake mentioned before, in lieu of the funding, uh, and hopefully if the legislative earmark comes through, as we are all thinking, we would be converting this project into a study team of some type to uh, push kind of a more limited scope of um, activities forward in um, you know, a meaningful way. And I do want to share with you a couple of images just to close out, and then I'll answer any questions if you have them. Uh, I went down to uh, the Learn Launch Innovation Summit at Fenway, and um, I was really pleased to see our educators from our region uh, being recognized both in the Innovation Challenge, but also being uh, selected in the top three for, uh, I think it was 20 or 25 um, groups to come down. So on the far left, you got Kate Ollander from Lennox. She's one of our BRLI champions. Um, she uh, you know, received uh, you know, one of the top three awards for her, 
her innovation and work across different schools in the Berkshires. So we we're happy to see Kate there. And Kate is one of our um, ISTE certified educators through the BRLI grant. Um, we help to support her to earn that certification. And she's just been a stellar leader. So we're really happy to have her on the team. And then in the center and on the right, uh, you'll see uh, the Pittsfield Public Virtual School was recognized as well with the virtual learning network across the state, um, led by Jim Flanagan, a consultant we've worked with for BRLI. And uh, also in the center, former Governor Jane Swift, she's the um, CEO of Learn Platform, uh, providing them with their uh, their glorious gift of uh, wonderful Red Sox tickets for winning that innovation challenge. So they were all thrilled and it was nice that they got uh, got the recognition because it's really cool to see both um, out of the three winners, two of them were from our area. So I think we've been doing great stuff and uh, really, uh, really happy to close out with these images. Yeah, I did put this in, um, Brendan, just because um, I know it's important that folks know that we've developed a really strong relationship with the Department of Education uh, and the Office of Ed Tech, and they continue to use this as a resource in the development of their systems and guides. And these were two recent guides that they put out. And um, I believe that actually our team and Brendan specifically had a hand in supporting and refining these through their experience working with us over the last two years. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, so I'll leave it. I don't know if folks have questions, but I can kick it to questions for Brendan if you have any. I do. Um, a couple of things. So one is um, the paying for Canvas was a big issue uh, early on. And so uh, is it still paid for and who's paying for it? And then also are additional, um, it, is there a continual refreshment of information placed in Canvas? for ongoing learning and professional development. So a couple of thoughts on that. So, um, you know, prior to my time, I believe, Jake, the districts had signed on to do uh, this for three years. And um, we actually, in this past year and then this coming year, uh, the the cost of Canvas is on the districts. And, um, you know, we know that our districts are, are continuing with it this year. Um, we have our own Canvas account for um, BRLI related things like we run PD through there, uh, the countywide day as well as others. Um, so, you know, we put some things in there, but we also add some things to our website. And, you know, we thought about what's the best access point for some of the resources. And often it's actually more the website for like if we're going to host a drop in session, take that video, put that on the website because it's a little easier to get into versus if we're going to do a PD that's like maybe four or five sessions, that might be the place to host. So so uh, I think um, as we think about our budget for next year, maintaining the BRLI canvas will, um, you know, our own instance will be a question that we have to uh, ask ourselves depending on funding. Um, but I know our districts are keeping that. And some, um, I know Pittsfield as well as Mount Greylock now have the use of a uh, learning management system in their contracts. So I don't see it going away in those places, uh, but certainly, um, you know, we've heard that uh, m pretty much all of our districts are keeping it. There's nobody we've heard that is abandoning it at this moment. That's great. Thanks, Brendan. Yep. Brendan, I have a question. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. What kind of challenge is it going to pose to the portrait of a graduate project in Berkshire County with the addition of a school that hasn't done all of the work. And it, it appears to have been a great deal of work over the first two years of the, of the project. So we have, um, you know, a couple of, uh, a couple of things in the works with Hoosick because we recognize that they're coming in at a different entry point. Um, also, they do have a little bit of experience with what we've done. Um, the director of curriculum instruction and PD in Hoosick uh, is a former um, Pittsfield uh, employee, Kristen Pallet, and she was involved with some of the initial phases of the portrait project in Pittsfield. She was she was with us, so she's actually their core facilitator. We are going to be doing some onboarding sessions for their uh, leadership teams, as well as their instructional leaders at the uh, at the high school, the eight to twelve um, zone, as well as working with them to 
sort of um, ease them into the process. For example, this year, the portrait focused a lot on signature experiences. So we are going to work with them to develop, um, you know, in a pilot form, their signature experience with their team, but also engage in some of our common uh, PD along the way. The focus that we have is going to be a lot on rigorous, purposeful learning. And we think that they will be able to um, join us with that. However, uh, the aspect of the signature experience might require some different pieces, such as, you know, some different kind of types of planning and sessions and engage them in some activities like we had done at our previous convenings, but also maybe sort of a separate PD for their team in uh, on the November day. So we've talked about that, about that nuance and um, have some initial plans for, for, for making that work well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I just will report that who's um, participation in the meetings I've been sitting in, they yeah. just seem really thrilled and enthusiastic about the possibility to be part of this network. They're 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 hungry, I guess, is what I'll, the way I'll describe them. So really good to have them. Um, so just really closing it out, I just have two slides. I um, always want to talk about community outreach. And there's just two things that I wanted to illustrate. Um, one of the last one at the last meeting you all approved having Mary Nash put together a closing, a sort of um, a, an annual report of sorts about Burke 12. She's beginning to do that. Um, please don't take any of these to the bank. These are sort of conceptual snapshots she sent to me when we met earlier this week. And she'll be working on this over the next couple of weeks. Probably what we're gonna wanna do is um, maybe have one or two members. And um, obviously, Vanessa, we'd love you to maybe weigh in at some point. You've been part of the community outreach group and the communications group. Um, just give us some thoughts, but really we're seeing this, this publication, it would be both um, electronic and potentially in hard copy as a, as a really concise, um, simply organized and graphically interesting eight to 10 page document that we could use to talk to our public about what is, who we, who we are, what it is we're doing, but also use it with funders to also describe our effort, historical and in current. So very excited about this. I hope to bring you um, um, uh, probably a refined, a little bit more of a refined draft by our next meeting and um, hopefully get some input from all of you before we hit the publish button, which I imagine would be in, in, in early fall. So excited about this particular, um, uh, this, uh, this initiative. I think it's well overdue. And then secondly, we continue to work with Open Architect. Um, I thought we were gonna have him here today, but I, uh, we realized we had vacation schedules a little messed up. So they'll be at our next meeting. We continue to meet with them. This is one of the newer dashboards, one on finance. I think at the last meeting, I showed you one on enrollment, one on demographics. Uh, they're building them on finance additionally. We'll have some other educational indicators, but um, again, the idea would be at the next meeting, maybe to do a little less show and tell um, on the inventory of the work we're doing and maybe spend a little bit more time on uh, showing the features of this particular dashboard, which ultimately would be part of our website. It'll be a web page in which um, these particular um, elements, in this case, finance, these are all manipulative, uh, man able to be manipulated um, variables. You can sort of select by um, school, by school choice per pupil and really m move around the numbers and It'll be helpful on the research side, but also on the communication side about what's happening in our school district. So we think this is gonna be a nice, um, you know, additional value add to the um, Burke 12 inventory of effort. So um, that's it, thank goodness, huh? I just got on under an hour and a half, which is always my target. Um, <laughs> so I'm, thank you. I'm thank happy you. to take a breath and entertain any questions or comments or whatever. Does or anyone, have any questions? anyone have any questions for Jake or Brendan or Bill Vallon about anything that was brought up today? Hey, Bill, I just want to say uh, before we close the meeting that um, I think we're all pretty fortunate that Jake is still here in the county working on this initiative. Mm -hmm. So you can hear and see from the organization and the detail that he puts into the work that he does, that this would not be moving forward if it wouldn't, weren't for the hard work that he puts in. So I, I know you all appreciate it, but 
um, we did come very close to losing him. And I think staying with us was a good decision for him, but I think it was an even better decision for this organization. Agreed wholeheartedly. Absolutely. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, you all are doing just fantastic work. Okay, I can um, unshare and kick it back to you, Bill. Thank you, Jay. Uh, the next item, if no one has any, any follow-up questions to any of, the, uh, of any of the presentations that were just made, <clears throat> the next item would be uh, members items. Anything that members of the task force, excuse me, I'll probably always say that, <laughs> members of Burke 12 board uh, have that um, they would like to raise that have not been brought up at this meeting. Just let us know how and when and if we can help. Okay, I, uh, sorry. No, just a quick answer to that would be, um, I mean, you're all being helpful by being here, by being supportive, by offering feedback and critique. I think by being available to do things when we ask, um, you know, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes and I don't always recognize all of it, whether it's Bill doing advocacy work or, or um, you know, Vanessa doing um, editing work or Andrea and Ellen doing um, financial and accounting and support work on the BCC side where we're Brian making calls to the governor. I mean, it's already happening. You're already weighing in and, and helping out in many different ways. And so I appreciate that. The other piece would you know, I always think about where are there opportunities and what are we missing? Sometimes when you get into a situation when, you know, you, you become so entrenched in the work you're doing, you, you sometimes miss things. And so if you all are seeing things in the county where you're saying, you know, might we consider leaning into this particular thing or supporting in this particular way, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we don't always see everything and we would appreciate that feedback. I think it's helpful. I have a question. So in, uh, in reading the Eagle and reading about uh, the notion of Taconic being devoted to CVTE, is there an opportunity for them and us to work together to at least educate those that are making the decisions about it? And what can, is there anything that we can do or should do? I might defer that back to Bill. <laughs> He's on the committee. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure uh, at this point, I'm not sure what role um, Burke 12 would play in that decision um, or in effecting that move. There are problems at Taconic that this will solve. There are problems uh, that and this was discussed at some length the other night um, about, about the, the physical condition of Pittsfield High School, which is not something that this group, I think, is in a position to, to do anything with. Um, I, I don't know. If, if, if nothing occurs to me at the moment, um, be, the school committee will have to make a decision on this probably by the end of this calendar year there has to be community outreach done since we really have not um we, we really have not solicited views from students or members of the public parents or simply citizens in the city about about this but the situation it's it's to, to, to conic is sort of um drowning in its own success here with with the uh the new facility, the number uh, and the expansion of programming, uh, there are many, many more kids who want to go there than would have been the case in, in until maybe two, two or three years ago mm -hmm. uh, and created problems for the strictly academic side of the, of the program now. So I, I, I know that, that, um, that, we would be, we here now would 
would be uh, willing to help in some way or facilitate this in some way. At the moment, I'm not sure what that way would be. Thank you. I was just curious. If there are no other member items, um, does any member of the public want to speak and express your views or tell us what we should be doing that we're not doing or to stop doing what we're doing, I, whatever, whatever you would like to uh, say. Well, I think no one wants to speak. So we have, we have to determine our next meeting date. Five weeks from today is August 27th. Six weeks from today is over Labor Day weekend. And seven weeks from today is the 10th of September. Jake, do you see a need for us to meet before September 10th? I don't think so. I think today's meeting was important for folks to see the budget and where we are. Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, um, on Friday, we go away for 10 days. So it's going to be, I think a lot of people have the same, you know, scene. There's a little bit of a quiet time. So I'm, I'm fine and pushing it forward. Does anybody object to scheduling the next meeting for uh, September 10th? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll... Uh, we will next meet, have a, we'll have a plenary session here on the 10th of September. Great. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those who want to stay in the meeting, keep it going. <laughs> say no. <laughs> I guess we're adjourned. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Take that. Thanks, Thanks everybody. That was a terrific Have a good summer. Bye, all. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Still there, Bill?